Today we're going to be working on a Dell XPS 9310 laptop that came in for a stock Dell logo on the screen. Let's power the laptop on. We see the keyboard backlight and a logo, a Dell logo, but nothing else happens. Now if you look at the light here, four orange and one white. At some point, I was getting six white and three orange blinks. Let's wait. Four orange, one white. Now the laptop went off. And now look at the blinks. One, two, three four, five, six white, and one, two, three orange. Six white, three orange. And before we had four orange and one white. So what does that mean? We need to go online and search for six white blinks and three orange blinks and see what that code means. You need to pay attention to the blinks because they mean something. Six white, three orange, Dell. What does it mean? BIOS problem. Possibly corrupt BIOS. What about four orange and one white? Because before I got four orange and one white. You can go on Google and search that stuff. I do not have to show it to you. It's a lot faster doing it that way but you can always go online and look at the blink codes for Dell. So we have a guy here that wrote, I recently encountered four amber, one white blink codes on my Dell G5. What does it mean? So no direct answer, but we know that six white and three orange blinks relate to the BIOS. Now I could have researched this stuff before I started the video, but I like to do repairs in real time. Blinking battery lights, four amber, one white. So four amber, one white possibly relates to a battery problem. Blinking battery lights, four amber, one white. It looks like four amber, one white is a problem with the battery. And that may be true. I was not able to power the laptop on without a charger. Right now, I'll show you. Let's power the laptop on. We see the backlight. Let's wait for the logo, then I'm gonna unplug. You see, as soon as I unplugged the cable, it went off. So four amber, one white is an indication that we have a faulty battery. But aside from the faulty battery, the laptop right now is stuck at the Dell logo because of a possibly corrupt BIOS. So where are we gonna get a good BIOS from? Search. Search online and you'll find it. Now I have one here for XPS 9310 with a clean ME. And we're gonna use that one to flash it onto this laptop and see if the laptop will work. If we look at the motherboard, we have a wind bond chip here, but that's not the bias chip. But rather we wanna look at this one, the XMC chip. That's the BIOS chip. So we're gonna remove the chip, put it in the programmer. We're gonna flash a good working BIOS firmware onto the chip and try again, see if that will solve the problem. Let's do it. If you look here, pin number one is right here at this white dash. and the chip is out. Let's put the laptop on the side. And right now we're gonna solder the chip onto this adapter and the adapter will go onto this programmer. Then we're gonna plug it to our computer and we're gonna flash the good working firmware onto the chip and hope for the best. I've done this many times for 
MacBooks and iMacs, you can look up the videos. Search for maybe Northridge Fix lost password or reset password or EFI. I forgot what the titles were for those videos, but I've done a lot. We're going to solder the chip right over here. And pin number one is on this side. So we have to make sure the chip, we align pin number one, the dot onto pin number one on the board. The board already has pre-applied solder. I always keep it prepped. So the chip is soldered onto the adapter. Great. Solid. And if all the pins are making a good connection, we should be able to read from that chip. We're going to place the adapter right here. And we're going to lock the latch. We do sell an awesome programmer on our side that does exactly the same thing. And we do provide this adapter along with the programmer. You can log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop and you can buy it from there along with all the tools that you need flux soldering station hot air station power supply voltage injection tool grinding pan everything that we use on our bench here for the most part is sold in our shop just add to cart check out pay and we almost always ship out same day so i have the adapter plugged in right here to the programmer and i've had this programmer for almost seven eight years those programmers, they last forever. If you take care of them, they last forever. We're going to open up the software and we're going to try to detect the chip. Detect and right there, it found one. And we're going to select. Now we're going to load the good firmware. Load. And now we have the good firmware. And now we're going to press on program and program. So the clean good bias is being programmed onto the chip right now. We have to wait. It may take 20, 30 seconds, one minute. It does not matter how long it takes. We just have to wait. Now, in the meantime, while the chip is being programmed, why don't we prep the pads on the motherboard? Because we're going to solder the chip back on the board. Fume extractor on. And the chip programming is complete right here. Programming successful. Awesome. Now we're going to remove the adapter. Then we're going to desolder the chip from the adapter. And we're going to solder it on the board. Hopefully all that work did not go for nothing. Let's use our anti-glare light to get rid of the glare. If you do not already have an anti-glare light, you can log into our site, northwishfix.com, click on shop, and you can buy one. One of the best tools you can have on your bench. Just look at the difference. One, two, and three. Ring light, you see glare, reflections. Anti-glare light, you see nothing. Everything is clear, super sharp, and the vibrance of the colors on the board are different. Let's solder the chip back on and the orientation of the chip should be like this. The dot on the chip should match with the dash on the board. You see with the anti-glare light we can actually read what's on the chip. If we go to the ring light it's hard to read what's on the chip. 
So you use a combination of the anti-glare light and the ring light to get the image that you want. Sometimes I use a combination of both. Sometimes the anti-glare light, sometimes the ring light. You have a lot of control. You see how we have a shadow here? We're not able to see what's here because the screw is long. In this case, I can add some ring light, just a tiny bit, and now I have the best of both worlds. Right, and the chip settled in place, awesome. Now we're gonna press and hold, apply heat, and we're gonna squeeze the guts out of that chip. All the guts, they settled right over here. And we have some left right here. We do not need to do anything else. I just want to get rid of the axis right here. And we're done. Now the question is, will the laptop work? Are we feeling lucky today? I'm gonna connect the battery. Not that the battery is working, but still, we got the four one blinks, which is an indication that the battery is faulty, but I plugged in the battery anyway. Oh, before I was not able to power the laptop on without the battery. But it looks like we have the same problem. If you recall, before when I removed the plug, the laptop went off. Right now, the laptop is able to power on battery, but we have the same problem. You know what, let me disconnect the battery. What if the battery is causing the problem? I'm gonna plug in power, USB-C. And it looks like the laptop will not power on if the battery is not connected. I have the USB-C cable here, but with the battery disconnected, the laptop will not power on, so the battery is needed. That's a crappy design. Old laptops, even if you don't have the battery connected, the laptop will still power on using the cable, but not on Dell. You need to have the battery to power the laptop on. Stupid. If a plug is detected, the laptop should power on regardless if you have the battery connected or not. And if you do not have the plug connected, the laptop should use battery power. But in this case, we need both. Try to press escape, F1, F2, and nothing. I mean, there's not much more I can do. We did fix something. Laptop is working on battery power and we are no longer getting the blinks. So what does that mean? Laptop is still stuck at the logo, keyboard backlight is on. Right now I cannot verify 100% if the firmware that we downloaded is good, still a stock logo. I mean, there's not much I can do right now. It's a BIOS issue. I downloaded a clean BIOS, installed it, and the same thing is still happening. Maybe I'll look for another BIOS dump and try again. If anything changes, I'll let you know. But for now, we're gonna deem it a no fix. I did everything that I could. It's clear that we have a BIOS issue because of the blinks, six white, three orange. So the only thing I can think of is we may have a bad firmware to begin with. I don't know. If you have a firmware for this laptop, let me know. Maybe we can try again. But for now, I'm gonna put the laptop on the side. I'll look for another firmware, try again. If that doesn't solve anything, then we're gonna deem it a no fix. 
and let the customer know. If anything changes, I'll also let you know. That's it. We can end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it wasn't no fix. Hopefully, you learned something from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.